Self-Publishing Podcast, episode number 152. This episode of the Self-Publishing Podcast is brought to you by 99designs, the online marketplace that helps you get outstanding book cover designs at an affordable price. Start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP and enjoy a free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks. Welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, where if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. And now, here are your hosts, three gods who spend most of their time up in the trees, Johnny, Sean, and Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Self-Publishing Podcast, the podcast that follows three full-time authors as we attempt to change the face of indie publishing. Join us and our trailblazing guests as we shove aside boundaries, freely experiment, and occasionally screw up. I'm Johnny B. Truant, and my co-host are Sean Platt and uh, David Wright. And today our guest is going to be Mark Dawson on the rather intriguing uh, tagline of subject of uh, building your own book bub. Yeah, I think this will be this will be great. I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, Mark's one of those people that we kind of we we knew in the way that people who kind of orbit in the same circles knew, but we'd never actually talk to him directly much, and um, we have been over the past weekend. But, oh my god, I've been emailing with Mark, and he he's he's sharp, and he's the kind of sharp that I just, I dig the hell out of. Um, he, because he's he's selling fiction, like, he's coming up with little systems to sell fiction, and I just think that's fantastic. So, um, maybe I think... This would, maybe this would be a good time to um, run through our, our upcoming... Um, Show guests in a spontaneous display of uh, professionalism. No, uh, I, <laughs> that's going to uh, make Dave uncomfortable. <laughs> next week we're going to have Mark Lefebvre, perennial Kobo guest, back again. Um, oh, I guess we only have two, so it'll be quick. Uh, we're going to have. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have many. I I have some tentatives. Like yeah, I have we have we just, have a lot on the oven for sure. I don't have dates. We do have uh, Seth Atwood, who you guys won't recognize, but he's Sean can describe who he is. He's um, an app guy, and he's going to be working with us on some stuff. He's also going to be at the summit in um, Austin. For those of you who are going to that, it, he's a super super smart guy. I don't know if he'll do it on the podcast, but he smokes a pipe like a hobbit, <laughs> and he has a he has a, a David Gogren uh, beard. So that Tree Paperson has the pipe like a hobbit kind of <laughs> one of those long ones i don't remember that's cc ball now oh okay sorry i knew him as creep creeperson back in the day <laughs> back in the day we back in your back. prison yard we days go, we go back we go, we go way back um but we also are going to have um uh i he's confirmed i think we just don't have a day uh dan wood um from drafted digital is going to be on um Julia from Nook is going to be on. We don't have a time, although I boy, I hope that's like confirmed. But I we're we're going to be doing. <laughs> it uh, is now. Stop talking. We're working on we're working on some some. We have uh, lots we of have, good stuff coming up. Marker coming well, on too. We're working on some iBooks people, but they they we can't actually get them. So we're looking to get some people who've been really successful on iBooks. So we're really trying to bang those drums. And Dean fucking Coons is going to be on. Oh, you know who? Oh no, I can't say that because I haven't confirmed it. But I have kind of a fun guest that I was just emailing today. Put it, put it in like, the chat. I don't want to say anything? Put it in the chat. Dave loves when we do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, I'm you already. Are... Oh okay. You wanna... <laughs> well, I know there's lots of stuff cooking. I don't know what your official. Stephen oh, King, okay. really? Why? <laughs> He's gonna be on. No, oh, not. Well, shut that out. Loud. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so that'll be fun. Uh so. Moving into other stuff. Well, um, we have awesome things, and I'm sure we have. I think we're backed up on questions. I think we should have. We are. We we should hit some voicemails today. I, I personally am preoccupied with being excited about the um, the the contact launch. Um, power of a page turner, I suppose, because the conversion on just the pre-orders, something like twenty to twenty-two percent of people who bought the first book have already bought the pre-order, which is really really nice. That's that. I, I mean. That's crazy great conversion. <laughs> I'm so thrilled with that. I'm buying a pre-order. It's not yeah, even... it's not even like that's the conversion from purchases from one book to another book that's already out. That's um that's people giving us money ahead of time. Uh and that's that's really exciting. So I, I do think that is um genre has something to play in that. But we also had, you know, the I mean we did a lot of work ahead of time. We made sure we had the cover up um as soon as we possibly could. The CTA, you know, is is it's smartly done. 
Um, we're getting a lot of list signups on that also. Uh, so all of that stuff is, is working. Oh, yeah, I want to do, and then we can move into something cools and, and, and get and get going with uh, what we got to do today and the questions. Um, but I I want to do a, an email show and I'll, this, Dave, you want to? Dave's gonna get really excited when I say this. I want to. Maybe I Dave should I'm, take the day off for this one. <laughs> I want to do the autoresponder show that we've been talking about because um, the the idea of getting that all totally finished and then putting it up just doesn't work for the guy who ended up writing a lot of them. That would be me because I just can't. If I can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, um, then it just sucks. So I have to get a few of them going. So I've built a lot of that, and I, I know where we're going with it, and Sean's given me beats on it, and we, we're going to talk about it a little more today. And so that's kind of a neat, especially since it was such a tough nut to crack to figure out that. So I want to do that at some point too. Yeah, we should definitely do that. We should also do one on, I, I know this is... I mark that down for for oh, the week after next. Does anybody mind? Well, that'll be, we'll have to move around the summit. but we'll Yeah, figure. we'll figure it out. But but we also want to do something that's more nuts and bolts. Like, I know this is boring, especially that's to people. bolts. But but like um you know uh, list management and stuff you know like w w I don't know if that's oh I'm gonna skip that one that sounds <laughs> I can hardly contain the excitement <laughs> I don't know if <laughs> 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 all right all right Pat Adam something cool I I, I want to hear Johnny something cool first because I already know what this is this is, this yeah, is so cool. I meant to announce this something cool uh, two weeks ago and I forgot. And I meant to mention it uh, last week, but we were having troubles getting um, David H. Lawrence the 17th on, and um, he actually showed up before uh, I got to my something cool. So I didn't get a chance to do this, but I've been wanting to, to do this one for a, a few weeks. Um, Sean actually kind of goaded me into it via email. Didn't goad me, but suggested, and, and I totally am on board with it. So I just had my 39th birthday uh, about a week and a half ago. And, oh, um, you want a parade? I do. I want a hero, <laughs> hero parade. I've heard that Sean gives those now. <laughs> They're uh, my favorite kind of parade. <laughs> yes. Um, but I've decided that uh, I, I will pu I'll publicly put this out here. I'm not going to turn 40 in Ohio. So that's my... You're going to kill yourself? <laughs> Holy shit, that's dark. <laughs> that's, that's one option. <laughs> that's dark. No, I, uh, I am... Going to I Texas or killing myself. It's, it's a way to take a stand there, Johnny. <laughs> I will officially... I'm making a point. I'm going to be moved down there by the time I turn 40. 40 years in Ohio is enough. There All you go. Right. That's it. <laughs> Everybody say, that's cool. Okay, he, here's what I think. You, you, never put, you, you never put your goals out there like that. There it is. Oh, my God. Like a line from Dave's thing. A line that just it encapsulated Dave's views on life. <laughs> Today, or no, I think it was yesterday. Um, I, I was I was editing some some Dave copy and I <laughs> pasted about. something I, I pasted something into our general company Slack, and it was just about how you should never hope for anything because hope will control you. And then <laughs> it's, it was just so Dave, and and Monica's response was, Dave needs to be merchandised, which <laughs> he does. We'd all buy Dave T-shirts, right? Yeah. The one who hates us all is the one who is clearly most loved of the three of us. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Dave, do you have anything cool? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing cool. Nothing cool is going on in my life, all right? Do you have anything hating? Do you have any any droopy eyelids to report? Oh, my God. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Better off on dead topics. All right. Well, can I ha can I have one of yours? Because I actually have yeah. three. You, oh, you, you're you're three. a cool guy. You you greedy gotta motherfucker. Pick two and save one for next week. Well, that's what I'll do. All right. So, um, all right. Well, one is a website called OneLook.com. That a fashion uh, website? No, it's not. It's really cool. It's a dictionary website. Um, this is in my eternal quest for new words and and shit like that. Um, it, so, but it's it, it, what's cool about it is it's kind of like a reverse dictionary in a way where you can type in something like uh, you type in a definition and it'll come up with words. So it, if you want, you know, a feeling that means you're cold and it'll come up with, you know, if you're an idiot and you don't know what cold is, right? You want <laughs> other words for, <laughs> for cold. But it's not quite like a thesaurus. It's more you describe something where you're not really sure what the word is. And it'll give you some choices of words. It's it's also a dictionary and a thesaurus and all kinds of cool things. It's a it's a word website. But I've never seen a website like that where you could type in you know something that you're not really sure of the word and it will 
uh, you know, semantically do a search and try to figure out what word you're trying to think of. Um, so anyway, I got a little really paper cool. clip. It looks like you're trying to figure out whether you're cold. <laughs> <laughs> so onelook.com you're is the name stupid. of the website. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. Uh, also, there's there's a new app I started using for all you writers who sit on your asses all day. You might like this. <clears throat> well, actually, except Dave. Dave will hate this. And Dave, you should probably just tune out because I'm about to make you very uncomfortable. Uh, uh, yeah. So there's an. You already app. made me uncomfortable earlier when you were telling your wife something about showing your penis or something. I did not. I said, "Do you want me to show it to you later?" It had nothing to do with my dick. Oh, okay. okay. Um, uh, to be fair, it usually does. <laughs> Um, uh, is this a rash? No, it's not a rash. Okay, so th it's an app called the Seven Minute Workout, and um, that's too long. <laughs> that bit in uh, there's something about Mary and the guy was gonna do six minute abs. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I mean, seven minute abs and six minute abs is right next to it. Which one are you gonna pick? <laughs> so the seven minute workout is pretty awesome. It's um. It, you know, it, it basically, it, it, you know, there's a whole article that's very long that links to in the in the app where you can actually read the research behind it. But it basically it takes seven, or I think there's 12 different exercises, and there's 10 second intervals in between each 30 second um, exercise, and it it's not fun. Like it's seven minutes of hell and misery. Um, but when you're done, like it it is a full workout, and it, it's it's your body's tired and achy after seven minutes, but it's it's a really good little workout. And I just, can just to, walk up the stairs for that. <laughs> and just to to you know get away from the desk for seven minutes, um, I think is is really cool. You know, um, so anyway, I I've really enjoyed using this app. I, I've started. I I've already been walking a lot, but now I've introduced the app into my my daily routine, and I really like it. And the first few days, you feel really sore. But after that, like it's it's cool. Like I really like it. So anyway, the seven minute app. I, I found the thing that you uh, had in Slack that I wrote. Yeah. Yeah. That, that'll be my something cool. Something cool. <laughs> something <laughs> I wrote. <laughs> oh, Sean wanted to have something he wrote. <laughs> something cool. But I didn't. <laughs> okay, so so it, it, it's a conversation between a boy and a sister, and he says, "Because I don't like to hope. Why not?" <laughs> Oh, no, she, I'm sorry, she said, uh, because I don't like to hope, why not, her brother repeated, because hope makes you weak. Hoping for something gives that something power over you. See power and that hope will crush you. <laughs> You're such a bright, shiny star. You know what I do for our, our stories? I haven't told you this until now. I basically just go to my journal and just things I think of during the day and pull them out. I thought that was common knowledge at this yeah. point. <laughs> I had a bit from the Better Off Undead sound bites about something about Dave's journal. I have something here. It's my dream journal. It's just the opposite of dreams. <laughs> oh, it was it's psychopathjournal.mp3. <laughs> I don't know what that one is, but I will play that one later on Better Off Undead. I'm very curious. Save that for you. Yeah, so, so am I. Uh, so do you want to do some of these, uh, some of these voicemails? Did yeah, I'd also like to... Cool. Uh, well, I do. I have a third thing, but... Um, uh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just mention this and dive deeper next week. But either today or tomorrow, we should finally be getting that new theme for... Uh, oh, yeah. Which is really awesome. We have literally been waiting since November for this. Um, but supposedly it's worth the wait, and we're really going to try to revamp the site soon and build a lot of community stuff. I advise the uh, copy blogger dev team and Jessica Cummins for spearheading the uh, whip cracking over there for us. Yeah, so it's taken a long time, but it's also because we're going to have an author theme that does stuff that no author theme does. Um, and we're very, very fortunate to have copy blogger having done that. Like we're really lucky. So um, it's it's done. Supposedly, we should see it within the next day or two, and um, the new Sterling and Stone site will be. Uh, we're we're going to try to build a lot of community into that, and we're really really excited about it. So that'll be more cool stuff coming up. Yeah, we've been uh, spit and bailing wire a lot with um, uh, the Sterling and Stone site. We're like it it works, but it's not organized in the way that we want. It doesn't have the functionality we want. It doesn't. Um, but things aren't showcased in any way or curated, and and it's very so. For instance, like the whole platinum reader thing, like they just they got contact a few days ago, um, 
we got a bunch of new platinum readers when we said that on the show that they got invasion early and so but otherwise people just don't know like they don't know that exists yeah it's the worst and it's a lot of stuff too it's like you know we want to update CTAs on the back of the book or there's there's just all these things we want to do and the end of that sentence is usually, oh, yeah, we have to wait for the new theme. And we don't have a page that lists our books. Like, I right. was talking to who I thought was genuinely interested in my books. It's and I was like, and I real, I went to the site, I was like, oh, there's nowhere here where there's, like, a list of our books. Like, that's kind of fundamental. Yeah, so we'll we'll be able to fix all of that really, really soon. So, anyway, that's something cool. All right. Um, but I, I do want to make an announcement about the questions. If you've been leaving us Japkins at that, you know, that... Uh, sterlingandstone.net forward slash ask us anything. That's actually not working right now. I have no idea why, but the the plugin that we used to hear those questions or see those videos is not playing them for us. So if you left anything in the last couple of days, we have, we're have we not able to access it. And um, we're probably going to just dis dismantle that because now we're going to have a new site and a new system for doing that. So anyhow, sorry if we haven't got back to you. That's why yeah, I didn't. I didn't reply to those guys. So I don't know if you were gonna. Um, all right. Anyway, so on to voicemails. So here we go. Uh, Sarah asking about character arcs. Hi, this is Sarah with a question for the Self Publishing Podcast. So I'm writing a book with two of my friends. There's three of us in total, and um, one of our character arcs is kind of confusing the end of it and stuff. So I know you guys like to focus on the marketing stuff, but I wanted to ask what your thoughts are on killing off characters and ending character arcs like that. So <laughs> yeah, day. any feedback I might get on that is great. Thanks. So, yeah, please don't assume that we only want to focus on the marketing stuff. I like questions like this. Yeah, we love questions like this. Dave, Dave, you off, so I think you could do it with Dave on yeah, this. Dave has wood. Kill them all. Kill them all with without 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 hesitation. Kill every character you can. I I I would say don't do that. <laughs> but um, I think you can kill whoever you need to kill. But I think that it really kill has off to have, the main character. It has to have gravity. It has to have weight. I think um I think Dave is a little bit kill happy. Um, <laughs> uh. And and I think that that kind of infected some of my beats early on at at Realm and Sands, where Johnny's like, "You want to kill everybody? Stop it!" <laughs> and and I think that there's a happy medium there. You, it's okay to kill anybody, but there really has to be a reason. Don't do it just to do it. Do it because it really genuinely serves the story and the story world. I and have make my sure, make sure your 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 readers love that character before you kill it. You can't just kill a character people don't. Yeah, need here's a CI. Much. Here's a CI thing. Here's a here's our, this is looking into our secret decoder ring right here. If you have a really sentimental chapter where you all of a sudden love a character, <laughs> motherfucker, Dave is about to kill that guy. He just is. <laughs> TV I, shows do that all the time. I can tell who's going to die in a TV show because all of a sudden they'll start paying attention to that character. Like The Walking Dead, like if they start giving that character a little more backstory, you know that motherfucker's <laughs> gone in the next episode. I actually have a favorite um, loathed killing off story. Like I actually have in a book, I, I actually that's a category for me of like, what the fuck? Why did the author kill that person off? Do you want me to say it? Or is it because it would be a spoiler? It, what's it a spoiler? The Hunger Games spoiler. Oh, 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 oh I, I, I don't. If it's in the final, I don't know because I didn't read it's, that. Yeah, it's in the, it's in the last book. Yeah, but anybody who's read it probably knows what I'm talking about. It's a totally unnecessary thing. You're like, what the fuck? It wasn't so not necessary. <laughs> Such an asshole thing to do. My favorite killing ever is Nikki and Paolo. And um. Oh yeah, that was great. In Lost, that's the no, best that's not, not the fit for Damning. The girl that went to take a shit. That's my <laughs> favorite. Okay, all right, you're right. That's awesome. All right, so you want to move on to the next one here? Yeah. We also have a bunch of stuff written in the. Well, I, I will. I will say. I will say this about about killing characters. There's been a time or two where I I've killed somebody off in like they were kind of integral to the story. Like I really didn't think it through, and that's not good. So well, kind of think it through. I think there needs to be a reason. I think that you as an author do get some extra, you get an extra vote. Like, I like that person kind of counts as long as it doesn't contradict the logic of the story uh, as a reason to save them. But but that said, um, there's a 
I don't know if I can spoil something in Harry Potter, but there's a, a death in that that is, like, it sucks, but it's just, it, it is necessary to what occurs afterward. Like, it gives the other characters motivations and stuff. Yeah, I think it's fundamental. It's like Obi-Wan, right? I'm about to spoil Star Wars if you haven't seen Star Wars. Well, and there is an element of the master must die before the yeah. protege can grow into who he or she is. And, and also, um, you have to consider genre. Uh, from the conversations I've had with romance authors, where like they've like talked to me about like you know story idea, like they they wanted some help with story ideas and stuff, and I would say, well, kill that person. And I'm like, no, you can't kill people in romances. It's like a cardinal sin. So be <laughs> aware right. of the genre or or children's books. You probably shouldn't kill people in children's books. Oh, that see, that's why Dave won't write for Guy Incognito <laughs> right there. Everybody died. <laughs> Here's safe. Chris with the question of of what to do now. Hey guys, uh, I'm Chris. I'm probably one of your newest fans. I got, I got a quick question for you. I have a blog and I have a small audience, but I want to, you know, I obviously want to start writing books. Um, I actually do have one out there that I did just kind of test the waters. Uh, but my question is, you know, what should I focus on at this point uh, in my, you know, in my author career, I guess? Um, should I focus on producing more books and getting more product out into the world, or should I focus on blogging and 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 email and trying to build up my audience? Um, you know, basically every morning, you know, I wake up and I start writing, but I'm kind of unclear on where I should be or you know what I should be writing. Should I be writing stuff from my website, my blog, and my you know my email? Uh, newsletter or should I be, you know, trying to produce books at this time? So hopefully you guys can help me out. Thanks a lot. I appreciate everything you guys are doing and uh, keep it up. Thanks. In my humble opinion, if you aren't, if you don't have books out there, you have nothing to blog about and market and build awareness of. Yes. I, I will say if, if he's a nonfiction author, if he's like in like a specific space where maybe blogging would help to get awareness of him more and there's an audience he can actually get to, to maybe put a little more attention into that, but for fiction, I wouldn't. I totally agree with Dave. I think if you're a nonfiction author, then that's authority building, blogging. But for fiction authors, I think you need to work on your craft. You need to get up every day. You need to put the time in to get the words, become a better storyteller, write better books, and you know, <clears throat> worry about getting you know a, a base catalog together first. Put your funnel in place. Make sure you have free stuff out there. And, um, and there is something to be said for, like, you can do this with fiction. Um, I'm not entirely sure on the timeline, but didn't John Green build up his YouTube following before The Fall in Our Stars? Yeah, he ha yes, yeah. He had books out there, um, though, so it Jen wasn't... Lawson, the bloggist, is another good example. She didn't release, um, I think it's called Let's Pretend This Never Happened or something like that, whatever first book. She didn't release that until she'd been blogging for forever. Yeah. But um, I think those are outliers. I think that in they're, general... They're total outliers. And, and, and Jenny, the bloggist, was also, you know, she was in the right place at the right time. She was back, you know, when blogging was first blowing up. And she has a very, very distinct voice. Um, and not everybody has a voice that's that powerful. Uh, and it's she's not the even like... the funniest person I've ever read. Yeah, she, like, right. I pissed myself reading her stuff before. It's it's so funny. She's so, so funny. Oh, my God, I'm laughing just thinking about how funny she is. <laughs> the knock-knock motherfucker, the rooster. That's my favorite. Yeah, she's her timing is she, – she has this real scattered approach to writing where it looks like she's just writing it off the cuff, but you know that stuff is – it's very intentional. She's, she's a sensational writer. So, anyhow. Uh, let's do one more, uh, one more of these, if that's cool. So, and then we, we, we do need to do the written ones. We'll switch to those next week. So here's, uh, here's one more about um, everybody's favorite topic and sort of tangential to today's book bub. Hey, STP guys. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, I've noticed that you finally had some success with book bub, and I was curious if you would be willing to share any of the magic that you apparently did to finally get them to pick you up. I know that um, you had been having a problem for a really long time getting picked up by them, as have a lot of us out here. So I'd love to hear if you have any tips or secrets on how you were able to finally get them to notice you. Thanks a lot. Okay. Spoiler alert, we're back to having a really hard time with them. <laughs> the, the, whole, the honeymoon was nice while it lasted. Yeah, our tip is to um, get lucky. Constantly submit. Fun. 
right? Um, we just we we sub we. <laughs> Isn't that your wedding advice or your marriage advice too? Y yes, yes, it is. Absolutely <laughs> submit. So you, you just it's just. I mean, I, I wish there were some sexier answer than that, but there's just not. Um, Attach as as you, money. As soon as you get reject, you know what? It's like a guy trying to pick up a girl in the bar. It's just the law of numbers. You know, you're gonna get a yes eventually if you just keep asking. Um, and and, and that's you wait it. till after 3 a.m. Well, that doesn't seem we we have tested at different times, but the emails always come back with no. Um, so I don't know. You know, I don't know what the I don't think there is an answer there. You just have to keep submitting and, you know, hope that eventually the hard problem with BookBub is that you don't really get a reason. They say that their, their form responses that you get back, um, you know, you know what BookBub is the new query letter. <laughs> it's like querying, right? Where you wrote this book and you're putting it out there for everyone. Um, so I think that you, it'd be nice if you had a reason. They said this doesn't work because of this. You know, if you knew that it was your cover or your description or your genre or whatever it was, but you don't even get that. You really just have to submit and kind of hope. And some of it is um, uh, they, they just have a lot of uh, of covers. So I don't know this for sure, or not a lot of um, possible uh, submissions. So I don't know this for sure, but I'm just guessing because romance is such a huge genre that. All other things being considered, if you have a good romance book with a good cover and a good blurb and good reviews, it's probably harder on average to get that booking than um, one for a category where that isn't true. So what, one of the things that we do is um, as soon as we get a rejection, we submit again. As soon as we can within you know the same day or, or, or soon. And we, um, if something gets rejected and we think that it, it there was a, maybe no good reason, like it seems like it would have legs, we'll just um, we'll wait 30 days, which is what they require, and submit it again. So the Beam Season 1, which was a great book bub, book bub ad for us, was rejected just once or twice, but it I was rejected. Twice. I think it was rejected twice. And we just we just kept trying. So now obviously there's some banging your head against the wall thing there, and, and if you um, they may never take a book because there's something they don't like, but Sometimes it seems like we're like, well, this this should go. Like, so we we just keep trying. So. Yeah. So it was our belief in the beam that you know this is a good book. It's got a lot of great reviews. Um, it, it's it's worth just mark down it. from ten bucks. You know that's yeah. It, it seemed like th this is a book they should take, and so I don't know. It's one of those things where um, being a little dogged, I think, pays off. So there you go. Um, and then the only question that, that, that remains here, I don't have a, an audio file, is um, it just came in separately, and it was, Dave, what the fuck? I can't buy a cover, so <laughs> I'm just going to put up nothing on, on my... Uh, I'm just going to use one of those default covers where it's just, I did it in paint, right? So that's the answer is yes, we should go ahead and go with that? Yeah, I mean, why bother? I mean, why go to the pros when you can just put up shit for free? I mean... <laughs> All right, so I'm going to bring Mark in now then. With no, 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 no. Okay. No, you want to go to 99designs.com slash SPP. Why? Why do you want to go there? Because they're going to give you a great fucking cover. They have designers waiting to create the cover for you. Uh, one of our friends and listeners of the show, Chrissy Moss, recently went to 99designs uh, using our uh, SPP code there and getting $100 off the power pack. And what did she get? She got one of the best covers ever. Until now, Chrissy's been doing her own covers. Some of them have been good. Some of them not so good. I don't want to, you know, hurt Chrissy's feelings. But this one, Ooh. this one. What's that? <laughs> <That's really laughs> more so good. I mean, come on here, you know? But thi this, she, this, this one is, Chrissy than us. <laughs> this one is great. Yeah, I'm cruel to you, motherfuckers. But this one is great. Uh, I'm going to share it with you right now. Um, did you send her a bullet-pointed list of why her covers were bad? No, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, but here it is. It's called Witch's Sacrifice. Uh, yeah, Christy Moss. Pro. That is a beautiful cover. Uh, I mean, just look at it. That is a professional cover, and that is the kind of professionalism you can expect from the designers at 99designs.com. And, you know, I think Chrissy's going to do well. Just based on the cover alone, more people are going to pick it up than they would otherwise. Uh, yeah, that cover will totally pay for itself. Yeah. So well, where did she hear about this? Because this is I mean, I've never heard of this company. <laughs> <laughs> uh 
Uh, you don't listen to our show, do you? Uh, 99 Designs, uh, they, they've been around for a while, and we've been using them for a while, and they have been great. Uh, uh, we've done a lot of our covers with them, and always, always a great experience, and always more great designs than we can choose from. And the best part is, if you don't like your design, you have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Uh, so start your custom design today at 99designs.com slash SPP. And using that, we'll get you the free power pack upgrade valued at 99 bucks, And then you can party down. Is anybody else totally fascinated with Dave's um, headphones? It looks like something chewed on them. Dave, it's like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for pointing that out, by the way, you bastard. Yeah, like the the, 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 the plastic, whatever the hell it is, came off of them. I'm very upset. I want to return them. Oh, man, I hope I'm you are fascinated with on here. those things, because that's just how you get disappointed. Uh, by the way, I do have something cool I wanted to share. I wrote a, a blog post, uh, a rare blog post on my blog, uh, davidwright.com. That's two W's, W-R-I-G-H-T. Uh, it's called How Clyde Barker Changed a Bigot, um, talking about my love for Clyde Barker and how he changed my thoughts on homosexuality when I was younger. So, oh, all right. Not now. Wait till the show's. Like up. to know if you'd like to know about Dave's bigoted past. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And Dave basically said, you know, I'm not really down with this, but this guy writes well, so I'm I'm on I'm on it. These gays are right now. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're letting gays write books. All right, I guess I'll change my mind. Next, you're going to let women and black people vote. That, right. that's, that's the Florida accent, by the way. That's the Florida accent. Is it from the panhandle? <laughs> All right, so I sent, a, um, I sent an invite to Mark, and I'm just wondering if this is the point where we should talk a little bit about... Um, oh, no, we shouldn't. We should just go ahead and, and talk to him since he's here now. Hi, Mark. Hi. Hello. Mark, hey, Mark. Doss, he's got a fantastic accent, which makes Dave happy. Oh, Dave's all in. Actually, it's Mark J. Dawson, the 14th, if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I think we should, be, all take, should all, you guys. we should all be the 14th. Good to meet you, too. <laughs> I, I, have, I have so thoroughly enjoyed your emails this last week. Um, I, was, I was telling everybody earlier, like, Mark's a really, really smart guy, so I'm assuming we're going to have a lot of great insights in the next half hour, because Mark is doing what we all want to do, which is selling fiction, but he's doing it in ways that, he's not basically doing the hope marketing <laughs> that a lot of fiction authors do by just publishing their stuff to Amazon and letting the algorithms take over. Hope um, will crush you. Yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is really, really smart stuff, and so I'm really excited that you're here, Mark. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. And I, I, I've mentioned previously, um, 18 months ago, I wasn't selling anything. I just kind of started. And I remember really vividly sitting in my in a battered old Ford Focus um, in Salisbury, where I live, and just basically chewing through um, all of the old SPP episodes. And it was really inspirational in, in, back in the day. And, you know, looking back at it now, I'm selling, you know, quite a lot more than a few. Um, but it's still, I remember those, those, those episodes really fondly. So it's great to meet you. Thank oh, you thank very you. much. Thanks. What, I wonder that? how I wonder how many depressed, sad people are sitting in their Ford Focus listening to SPP <laughs> with a gun in their hand. I thought it was, I thought it was really funny when I was when I started. I couldn't tell the difference between Johnny and Sean. I could, <laughs> Neither can I. <laughs> no, you, you, Dave, you were I knew you were kind of the rock. It was like I know that, <laughs> that Dave's Dave's the distinctive one, and the other two are so enthusiastic about everything. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's uh, the one who bonds with all the suicidal writers out there. Every single <laughs> one. Dave's their peep. So because we're total professionals, um, Mark, um, we're of course going to ask you to give your own bio. So <laughs> why don't you just tell people where's the, 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 the best place to find you and, and, and so on um, before we delve into how to make, you know, start your own book bub, essentially. Not, not literally, of course. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, the best place to find me as of today is um, some of the things we're going to be talking about. I've, I'm kind of putting some free videos together. So you can go to www.selfpublishingformula.com, um, sign up there for some free videos. Uh, but if you're interested in my fiction, it's uh, markjdawson.com. And in, in terms of a quick bio, um, I was originally traditionally published back in 99 and 2000. Um, had a couple of books out with Macmillan um, in 
in the UK and strangely Russia, which was a bit weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that, that kind of went, it was good fun up until the point where the books were on the shelf. Um, and from that point, I was just, everything was disappointing. No promotion, no marketing. And the whole thing kind of just was really dispiriting. And I kind of, I stopped writing for six or seven years. And it was only when um, a friend of mine um, told me about Kindle and what was possible with self-publishing that I kind of had a look realized it was there were some legs there and I started to write again and since then I've published I don't know 17 novels I think 16 oh, 17 wow. novels some box sets um, what period of time I, is that uh, I was nuts last l last year I wrote almost Johnny like levels of production I was like six books six novels three novellas and that was whilst I was com I was commuting to London and back from where I live so three hours on the train every day which was my writing time um, and I've got two kids under three, um, so it was, it was really, it was, it was really crazy busy. But the reason it was, it was, I was doing it was because I could start to see sales, and I, could, I was getting emails from readers, and and my, you know, everything was just exploding. And money, of course, yeah, that's I suppose the ultimate validation is I was starting to get paid for it. And so it was, it was very difficult to almost to stop. It was, it was really, you know, it was just really, really great fun. Last year was amazing, and then this year started off in the same fashion. So what, I, I just wonder how to begin with this because this is what you're doing is super cool and we, we're, we're interested in it and we're, we're pursuing it um, mm. with your help. But I just I think we want to add a caveat on a lot of this. Um, and this is a big one. This is bold type, you guys. Yeah, all caps. Yeah, and and that's that. Um, anything that first first of all, um, easy buttons that don't have any grounding in reality are a really bad idea. And so the reason that that what Mark is doing is working for him and the reason that we hope it will work for us is because we've built the architecture and we've optimized everything that we have. Mark's covers are very, very pro. Um, our new covers are very pro and we're going through with our descriptions and we have a, a, a deep funnel uh, across everything that we do. And I think that it would be really tempting to listen to a show like this and think, okay, I'm going to buy Facebook ads. I'm going to do one of these things. and. Um, that's going to be my easy button, and that's a great way to lose a lot of money if you don't do it intelligently. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that even one step further. Remember last year we had the, the show where we almost started to talk about Facebook marketing, and then we pulled back <laughs> because we knew it's so easy for people to do it wrong and to just throw away their money and to get disillusioned, and we don't want to see that happen, and you really do have to have everything lined up. You have to understand what you're doing. But you also have to have an understanding of human behavior and psychology and conversion. And you know, I I was able to get out of debt um, by writing copy. I'm a good copywriter, and Mark improved my copy. On you know, I gave him a little blurb for an ad that we're going to run, and he's like, yeah, 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 but you got to do it this way. So um, so what you want to do when you're hearing the stuff that we're about to talk about is think about it strategically not so much tactically, because there's a, there are going to be some fantastic, I mean, I don't even know what we're going to say, but I know there's going to be some fantastic ideas here. And so just think about it in, in the broad terms, not don't copy and paste the strategy, because not all of it will probably work for everybody listening to this. Yeah, I agree with that. And, and I mean, one thing that Facebook is really good at, the ads, the ads kind of interface is pretty good at taking money off you. So definitely be careful <laughs> with that. Um, and so you, you can set limits on your budgets and all that kind of stuff. But it is it is easy to throw money at it and hope that it will work and that's that's an easy way to you know, to lose your shirt so definitely be careful. So big picture stuff first. Uh, we titled this with the rather intriguing idea of building your own bookbub. Now, what that means, and I'll let you guys elaborate. But um, bookbub is is fantastic to get. You get a bookbub ad and you you just get a bunch of sales because they they email for you. And as we learned from our earlier email and discussion, our, our voicemail. You, you have to beg and plead and offer your, your first child and sacrifice a goat to get an ad. <laughs> and wouldn't it be nice, and actually um, the first person who I heard say this uh, was Nick Stevenson. He, he, I think I mentioned this before. He did an interview and somebody asked him what was really made him decide to focus on his email, build, building, email building. And um, he said, what well, was BookBub? Because like, wouldn't it be great if you had something and you could then you could contact your people and it was as powerful as a BookBub ad but you controlled it. You sent. You decided what you were going to send, and there was no competition other than your own books. And so I think that's sort of what we're looking at when we say building your own book club. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd, I'd spin back one and say what you're looking at is building your mailing list. Mailing list. That that was the main thing. You guys have mentioned this hundred times before, and it's absolutely bang on. The thing that took me from selling 
hundred copies in January to selling several thousand every month as, as, we, as we sit here now is just I had a relentless focus on my mailing list that's absolutely key and so I can use the list now to, to launch books into the top 250 of Amazon.com reliably um, you can kind of get more um, technical with advanced reader lists and get reviews quickly all, all this kind of amazing powerful stuff is really key but I, what I was interested in was, was finding other ways to build that mailing list. So you've got all the usual stuff. So you've got CTAs in the back of books. Um, if you have a book uh, ad, you've got to think you're going to get a lot of eyeballs on your page. So you want to make it easier for people to sign up to your list. Even if they don't buy or download your book, you want them on your list. Put things like put your CTAs in the front and the back of the look inside because uh, people can sometimes just do that. And, you know, that might be... I mean, I take, I take a subscription over sale every day of the week. It's much more important. So then looking at that, then I thought, okay, what's next? I've, I've got all, all the kind of the optimized um, systems that we've, we've spoken about before, and Nick's very good on that. Um, I thought, how about Facebook ads? Because you know, I've, seen, I've seen some other industries using that and with, with, with really positive results. So I started, I think January the 29th, I kind of made my first ad go live, and I've got two two strategies on Facebook. One is lists and one is sales. And if, if we get time, we'll talk about sales. But for the purposes of the first strategy, it's building your list. So what I did was I wrote a, you know, a reasonably good compelling copy, nice image, um, put an ad together, and then targeted it. One of the things you can do on Facebook is just completely nuts. You can you can target so specifically you know, to any kind of niche you want. Because there's you know, 1.4 billion people on Facebook, and they, and they go on, 70% of them go on every day. You can find your niche. It doesn't matter what you're writing. There will be people there who want to read your books. So if you can, if you can target down to find um, that reader. So for me, my books are compared to Lee Child and Jack Reacher. So I, I aim my ads so that they, they go to people who like their like the pages for those characters and that author. So I put the ad together, um, have a really good reader magnet. So in that case, it was something that you guys did with the starter library. So I give away two novels and two novellas. So you know, you put down it's you know it's worth fifteen bucks for the, for nothing. All you need to do is go onto my website, which is the optimized squeeze page, which you know you guys have spoken about before. Give them the email address. That goes to Mailchimp. Mailchimp fires back the um, the books. I I tend to fire them you know over the course of a week, so I can analyze open rates, click rates, all that kind of stuff. That's that's a bit more technical, I think, than we'll, we'll have time to get into yeah. today. But. And in, I mean, I'll give you the numbers. I since January the 29th, I spent um, two thousand five hundred dollars on this one campaign, and that brought me in just short of four thousand new subscribers, which is a cost of sixty three cents per subscriber, which is is competitive with in industry terms. Um, and that kind of sounds daunting. That's quite a big number. But since the last couple of weeks, I've I've dialed that number right down. So my my budget now is ten dollars a day. And that's bringing me in between 30 and 40 new subscribers every day. That's really reasonable. Most people could probably yeah, afford that. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to. You don't have to spend big. Uh, you just got to optimize your ad, make sure that it's properly targeted, um, and you know, check your conversions. Just keep an eye on it all the time. Um, tweak things if necessary, and there are there are some cool ways you can do that. The 63 63 cents per fan is. I'm happy to pay that. And one of the other things I do is in that autoresponder sequence that I send out. They get the free stuff, and then the fourth or the fifth email is the first kind of let's see, let's see how they react to something that's paid. So that's uh, an email um, advertising the second book in the Milton series, and they've got the first one for free. So I keep an eye on the open rate and the click rate for that. Um, and then after that, I give another, I offer another one, you know, another paid offer. And then if the sequence finishes with a Survey Monkey survey, survey which kind of asks them about the campaign. How they thought, how they thought it was. Um, had they bought a book? Did they think they'd buy another one? What they think my books are worth? All this kind of it's really useful data, and it kind of it's it's. I've done the sums now that that's, that's demonstrated that 63 cents per acquisition is is most likely to be beaten by what I think each subscriber is worth to me. I think each subscriber is worth about you know two to three to four bucks. So it's you know, you know I'll pay that every day 63 to get to four bucks. It's it's a pretty easy sum. And you're saying that that's the worth during the life of the autoresponder series, right? Like, it, but some of these are lifetime readers. Right. I mean, lifetime readers probably well above that. Yeah, and, and one other thing that I'd point out here too is, 
you know, Mark did an exceptional job last year of producing. So he has stuff that he can give away. He has reader magnets and he has stuff that he can upsell. This isn't going to work if you have one or two books. Um, or if, if all that you have is a free funnel starter and a 399 book, your numbers aren't going to be the same. Depends what your objective is. I mean, if you've got two books, um, say you've got you've got one book, you could. I mean, I, I I've written a kind of a PDF giveaway that I, that is kind of another of my magnets, um, which converts quite well. You could you could give that away, um, get them onto your list, and then you know you could you could email them after a week and say, I hope you enjoyed the you know the short story or the character sheet or whatever it is you've got. Here's the here's the main book. Here's what you know. Here's what you'd love to read next. As long as you keep monitoring that kind of stuff and you see what, what the conversion is, you you know, you're going to be okay. But it's, you know, there's so much stuff to dig into. It's, it's yeah, really there's a lot of testing really and there's a lot of mm-hmm. monitoring. And I think that's the kind of stuff. I mean, I, I've actually seen blood come out of Dave's ears before <laughs> while we're, when I'm saying things like test and monitor and split test. Split test makes him want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Yeah, now with Dave, actually, you know, I, I'm not particularly techy, and I'm not that I'm not completely data focused. I'm my I, I'm a writer. That's what I do. But my what I want is to get my books into the hands of as many readers as possible, and this just happens to be a pretty good way of doing it. And so I kind of um, you know put my rubber gloves on and and, and well, no, and, it. and that's why you're you're an exciting voice, I think, because you know you see this in a, in the nonfiction space. You you can see this kind of data campaign often, yeah. but to yeah. find a fiction author who wants to tell great stories but has this element to them, I think that that's, that is a recipe for success. So I think all of us should be listening. This is, it's a good time to be getting into this because not many people are doing it, not many writers are doing it. And, and I see occasionally in my newsfeed ads from traditional publishers, and they are shit. Like they, they, they'll kind of use the, <laughs> they're the worst. Kind of, they're terrible. <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing. They're just sh- chucking money at it. Yeah. They'll use they'll use images that aren't optimized for Facebook, so they've been badly cropped. So you can't read the title, or you can't read the author name. The copy is awful. There's no there's no clear call to action. Mean social media firms through <laughs> the nose for that stuff too. I know, I know, it's crazy. So yeah, there you go. I mean, that's that's kind of part one. Do you want to talk quickly about um about paid? Well, about, about I would. The, Maybe this is uh, maybe this is a subset of what you're you're if the paid thing or maybe it's um mm. but, but uh, I was going to ask for sort of keys to success with something like that or does it make sense to go ahead and talk about the paid offers and then talk about keys to you know what work? They're, they're probably the, the keys to success are probably the same for both to be honest. So I mean if, if we talk about the, so campaign one build your list that's what I'm doing. Campaign two is sell books and that this was I wasn't sure how this would go because. At, at this point, I'm not giving away something. I'm trying to sell something. So I didn't know how, how that would that would work out. So uh, I started how doing this. How long after? I'm sorry, Mark. How long after you? Because you started with the campaign one with list, right? You you didn't move into actually trying to convert yes. people into purchases until later. What was the, the time differential between when you went from campaign uh, one to campaign two? I think I did six weeks of campaign one, and then I started doing campaign two between two and three weeks ago. So I've got enough data now on, on campaign two to know to, you know to to know this is potentially really good stuff. So, I mean, just in kind of broad terms, um, what I'm doing is there's another ad, great, a really nice image that my I I got my designer to to make for me, and then really fizzy copy. I don't think I've shown you guys that yet, but I, I'll send it across. Um, so it's it's you, you've got to you, you you guys know about writing good copy, but you you can't be a lot of writers writers are too shy and too Reluctant to big themselves up, and I think you have to do that. You have to be positive, and you have to, you know, you have to be proud of what you've got to sell. So, provided you get those two things right, um, then, and actually, I'll, I have to say this because this is really cool. If you use, if you've got your link that's sending someone to Amazon, you have it has to be an Amazon affiliates link. So that's that's Amazon's sorry associates link. That's their affiliate scheme. So, if someone clicks that link and then buys your book, you get a, a commission from Amazon. For that book, so your 70% royalty goes up to about 79% immediately. So that's that's free money. And then if they buy, um, I, I find some other people then buy my the, the first box set and the second box set. So that's another sale I wouldn't have got otherwise. And then you, um, yeah, so y- y- you're basically getting paid twice for for the for the one advert, which is you know just amazing. And and you get well the other good thing is, if someone um, buys something for on Amazon after going through on your link 
it could be anything at all. Uh, you'll, you'll get a commission on that as well in 24 hours uh, you know, since they go in. So I've had someone buy a thousand dollar watch and my book. <laughs> so I, I get a, I get like a, a, a 15 cent commission for my book and then a fifty fifty dollar commission for the watch, which yeah, that's crazy. But just in terms, you of, in terms of tracking data, you also get you're able to say how many people yeah. actually bought because you're tracking those sales. I yeah, got you, it. I, you, you've got to attract the richest readers possible. What do richest people <laughs> like to read? I'm going to start writing in that genre. No, rub <laughs> up, rub up, it. Come on, let's get in on that. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to track it, Johnny, because um, that's how you, you measure your conversion. So you, 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 Facebook will tell you how many clicks it's sending, and Amazon will tell you how many sales you've got. So you, those two marry up so that you know exactly what your return on investment is. You have to do Johnny, both. you want to write a book called Rich People Are Awesome? <laughs> <laughs> Are you down? So in, I, since I've been doing kind of campaign two, this is this is amazing. I've I've spent two thousand four hundred twenty-seven dollars, uh, and I've made four thousand eight hundred eighty-four dollars. So the profit is two basically two and a half grand, and that's so that's basically a return on investment of one hundred one percent, which is you know that's kind of free money from Facebook. So applying that caveat again, don't people shouldn't rush to do this because you can lose money, but if you do it right. Um, yeah, you can do really well, and and the other benefit is, this is the one the thing I'm advertising is a, a 999 box set that I've dropped down to 699, and that started out life when I started the campaign around about 15,000 on Amazon rank, Amazon's rankings. It's now about a thousand, and it's sticking there. So you're also getting organic organic traffic on top of everything else. So, you know, I it's one of those things where I said to my wife, "Am I getting this wrong? Because this doesn't. This just looks like it's too good to be true." And she kind of looked at my numbers. And I spoke to my accountant as well, and was, they were both like, "No, it probably is. Looks like it's right." What are you from in select? Sorry, uh, he, uh, they, uh, what what made you choose six ninety nine for the for the box set price? Um, a lot of people go like super cheap on box sets. I've noticed. Yeah, I, I think if. The thing with that is you, you can work out how much it's costing you per click. So say it costs you 30 cents per click. If you went 199, you've got 199 divided by 30 Super cents. Super cheap won't work. The math won't yeah, work. Your, your conversion has to be really, really high. Otherwise, you'll waste money. But if you've got 699, that's 699 divided by 30. I think you, I have to sell one every 40 clicks. And my conversion is like three out of, you know, it's three or four times better than that. So... Yeah, I don't think the strategy works if if you have something like one two one or two ninety nine. You've got to you've got to look at six ninety nine, maybe maybe five ninety nine. Okay. But no, I'd go no cheaper than that. All right. What were you trying to say, Johnny? Oh, I was gonna. I was I was actually investigating this while you guys were talking. I, I was uh, curious to whether you were in select or whether you were cross platform. Uh, a bit of both. So I've I've got some some are, some are in select and and some are everywhere. So the, the, thing, the, the box set is, is, is select. Now, have you used Amazon's uh, advertising? Um, no, but I haven't. And I think, the, the thing, I think my view is it's too early for that to be working properly. I haven't heard any, anyone saying they've made any money on that. Yeah, I haven't heard anyone say awesome. I've heard a mm -hmm. lot of people say it, this would be great if it was awesome. <laughs> But yeah. no one's actually singing the praises yet. I think it's it's pretty early. I mean, they'll get it right eventually, but maybe maybe in six months or a year's time. But f for me, it's not really working at the moment, so I'd rather concentrate on Facebook. So yeah. what are the... Go ahead, Sean. No, no, no. By all means. Well, I was going to go back to my earlier question about what are sort of the common themes with a successful campaign. What have you found optimizes something fast? Um copy and the, the kind of the traditional things that, that people would associate with, with a good ad. So it's, you've got to write really good copy. Um, you've got to have a really striking image that stands out on a news feed. And then you've got to think about where are you sending that traffic. So, you know, normally we've, you've spoken about landing pages before, so you might have a landing page on your website. But in this case, your landing, landing page is Amazon. So it's your product page. So you've got if to make you're sure, selling, but not for the lead capture. For lead no. capture, it's still a squeeze page, right? Absolutely, yeah. So if, if you're selling, you've got to make sure your Amazon page looks great. So all, all the things that you would normally focus on. So you need, you know, social proof in the reviews. You need, you know, the look inside has to be pristine, no mistakes. Um, you know, maybe use a little bit of HTML in the in the product description. All all those kinds of things that you know, the window dressing. 
Um, and, and the same thing goes for um, a squeeze page on your own website. All, all the all the usual stuff. Just make sure that it's optimized. That you know it's the purpose is clear. You, you want people to sign up, and you tell them what they're going to get. And uh, now, is this advice that you also have on your your website as well for people? Yeah, I mean the, the 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 course. I'm in the process of putting this 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 video series together, and it's kind of these three videos that is basically a walkthrough of setting up um, an advert for mailing list acquisition, including a screen flow with you know me telling because it is a little complicated to start with, but just taking people through the steps of you know do this, do this, do this, and and then you know off you go. I think one other thing to um, really be aware of too is uh, Facebook ads can be uh, uh, amazing. Um, but they can also be a total drain. And this is why we pulled back from talking about it last year. Um, it, it's the targeting stuff. So if you, when, you're, when you're doing it, you really want to target well. Uh, I, I think that knowing who is going to see your ad is a really, really big deal because if you just put an ad out there and it's not yeah. targeted, you're not, your conversion is going to be balls. Um, but you know, for, for Dave and I, for example, if we were going to, and we are going to, um, do an ad for Yesterday's Gone, we want people who like Stephen King and Dean Koontz to see that ad because we're much more likely. You know, romance readers, like, probably not. <laughs> That's not a good ad spend. So I think that taking the time to understand, and this is just basic marketing stuff. You have to know who your ideal reader is. If you don't really know who your ideal reader is, you're going to have a harder time selling books, especially if you're trying to do it in a more direct way like this. Now, yeah, and sorry, Dave, go on. No, no, you go ahead. I'll come back. I was just gonna that's how I, I won't tell the whole story, but there was um there's a, a story went around a couple of weeks ago about the two techie guys in San Francisco. One of them played a prank on the other one. And so the other one for revenge. Oh, um, I love my favorite story. I know the story. Yeah, I like the story. He, he target he targeted the ad to, to the one person, to his roommate. And then in the in this guy's sidebar and in his newsfeed it was ads for things that he'd only told like his mum. <laughs> this guy was a sword swallower, so there'd be um and that's not a euphemism I there'd be like a there'd be an advert for, for sword stuff, you know, something about how are you having trouble swallowing your sword? <laughs> it's just incredible. That is how particularly you can be with, with, with the targeting these days. It's well worth looking that story up because it's really funny. It's really funny. In fact there's a, um an unwritten LOL story that <laughs> is very loosely based on that story because I thought it was so funny. Uh, and it's called The Roommate. And I, 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 I love that story. I think it's That's so not the funny. Story I was thinking of, though. Um, that is pretty funny. What was the one... Um, I don't even remember the story. It was something about um, somebody knew what people were searching for in a certain medium and created a bunch of really on-the-nose like jingles or songs or something. Do you remember this, Sean? Oh, no, I know what you're talking about. This is, this is um, somebody you know what's for Spotify searches. Spotify. So somebody, they would, they would look up really, really, like crazy specific searches, and then they would just make up a song and title the name of that song, this crazy <laughs> search term, and then put it on Spotify. And then they would get all this like random like revenue because people were playing those songs because they just showed up in searches. So they were only creating music to be based on this crazy. This <laughs> is <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So, so oh. a question question I have: um, Are there are there books? Are there books too popular to target? I mean, should you target like a mid-list book or like like should I target the stand or like something that might be like the stand but a little uh, closer to our levels of success? Also, should you target newer or older books, like books that people are talking about or like classics, like the stand or let's say there was like this new version of the stand? What would you target? Something that somebody's talking about right now or the thing that like a lot of people have already said, oh yeah, this is my favorite book that forever ago. I think you, you want to, when you're building your ad, you want to um, look at, so you put in the stand and you'd find out how many people like, you know, are going to be targeted by the ad. The thing that's really clever is you can take, for example, your mailing list and you can put that into Facebook. Facebook will, will match the number of the people on Facebook who are on your list and then they'll build a mirror audience of people who share those characteristics. So maybe like the same kind of books, maybe like Kindle, that's a pretty good, good one you'd hope that it would catch. And then if you combine that with, say, the, the stand, then you're going to get a much more um, kind of a mix between 
someone who likes a classic book that your book is compared to, but also also flavoured with um, the, the kind of more contemporary things that they might like. So yeah, it's it. There's, and there's, there's, there are levels beyond that as well, but in, in terms of that's what I would do. I'd, you know, that's what I've, I've suggested for you guys. Yeah, Dave, I think you want to look for intersections. So it's not just the stand or just Dean Coons. It's okay. you know people who like the stand but also really like Lost. Like that's a really, really good reader for Yesterday's Gone. Yeah. Right. And so they they like Kim, they read Kindle books. They like indie fiction. They love the stand and Lost. Like that's our reader right there. So it's a small niche, but we can. That's that's the magic Highly of targeted. Facebook targeting, right? Yeah. We only those people see our ads, then that ad is going to convert way better than people who like Kindle books or people who like Stephen King, even. Uh, yeah. yeah. It, the more targeted you can get, the better your ad is going to convert. That's the what, key. What What about the um, What about the offer? So um, we had bantered back and forth a little bit in email about what, what were good price points and stuff, but if um, I'm also wondering about like you like the idea of box sets. But um, I'm wondering if you could take an individual book and say, okay, well, this uh, you know this book is normally seven bucks, and I'm going to discount to six or something like that. But it's it's just one book. I mean, do those do those sorts of things still work? I haven't tried. I haven't tried that because I mean, none of my books start that high. Um, I mean, in principle, there's no reason why right. it wouldn't work. Whether you'd need to have a bit more of a brand name to to kind of make that more attractive, I don't know. Um, I, you know, for me, I, I think a box set is a really compelling. Thing to to offer someone. You you can write in the copy three hundred and fifty thousand words of you know, you know a, a million five star reviews or maybe not a million, but you know what I mean. It's it's easier to to kind of build that up. I would I would probably not go. F I wouldn't put any of my own standalone books up and and try it. I think I'd definitely I'd keep it to box sets for now anyway. And, and you're thinking that um, six dollars five ninety nine seems to be about as low as you'd want the actual purchase price. To be because otherwise the the math doesn't work out. But the yeah. being able to say that it is discounted from some higher value is also valuable. Exactly. Yeah. If if, if say you say you did the bean and it was nine ninety nine and you bought it down to six ninety nine, then you can say get thirty percent off, and you still got six ninety nine, which means you still got say forty clicks before you have to, before you need to get one to to break even. Um, the lower you the lower down you get, you're 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 making your conversion. It's gonna be much more competitive. It might be difficult to to hit that. You might start to you know just break even or maybe lose. So I think six five six nine nine is a sweet spot for me. This is another one of those things too, where you have to when you're looking at what somebody else is doing and you're thinking what is their outcome versus what is my outcome, and maybe you have um, a little bit of money to spend, right? So maybe. Um, instead of spending it, you've already like okay, you've set five. I'm making ridiculous numbers up here, right? But you, five thousand dollars is your budget to make this self-publishing thing work. You've bought a great cover, you've got a great edit, your book's out there, and maybe it's worth it to you to break even on the campaign. You're not trying to get put a dollar in and get a dollar fifty out. You're happy putting in a dollar and getting a dollar back and thinking, okay, I'm building a list. I have mm. these people are going to be my fans and my readers and maybe it's even okay like there's really nothing wrong with spending money to get a list you know if you're saying okay it's going to cost me x amount of dollars to get a list of 10,000 readers and I'm okay doing that because once I have those 10,000 readers I can really leverage it buy a list in the in a bad way yeah well buying a list is a, like the worst thing you can do if you're actually just going to buy a list but this isn't buying a list this is paying to build a list right but you can also you can also pay to build a list in a terrible way too you could end up with a bunch of people who it isn't aligned like at all right well alignment is 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 the core component here and mm. this is a smart way to do that so if you're willing to spend the money to build a list, then that's okay too. You just, as Johnny said at the beginning, you just can't think of it as an easy button. Oh, I'm, I'm going to go make some Facebook ads and I'm going to make a bunch of money. And, you know, like that, that's not really how it works. Um, Mark has clearly put a lot of intelligence and a lot of testing and um, a lot of, you know, work ahead of time by actually writing stuff. So there's a lot of moving pieces here, and I think they came together rather elegantly for Mark because he knows what he's doing. So take the take the good pieces here, and there's a lot of really good pieces here, and think about not only what can you do right now, but what can you do a year from now, you know, because you always want to be thinking about what's next. What am I going to do next year? What am I going to do when this batch of my work is done, and how will I find readers for it? And so I think you've done a just a fantastic job with that. And, and 
Mark, do you think that uh, do you think this works a little more easily for nonfiction than fiction, or it's easier to target uh, nonfiction? Um, I haven't done nonfiction, so I, I'm probably not the best person to comment. But uh, you know, if if there are going to be people who have you know are looking for things on Facebook, obviously, and and if you can you can find a place where those people go. So you know, if you're writing something about you know ways to improve, you know. People who've got short sight, you know, talking about glasses or spectacles or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you can find where they hang out, you can serve an ad to them. Um, and I think the, the principles are equally applicable across across fiction and nonfiction. I notice yeah. that I get I get a lot more ads in Facebook for nonfiction and fiction. I I think they know that I'm like bitching about info marketers or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nonfiction definitely. Um, I, I would think. think here. I would think nonfiction is way easier again because people are looking for solutions, which makes nonfiction easier to optimize, you know, all around. Um, so for sure, I'd say it's easier, um, especially if you're not selling a book but you're selling a product. Because you know, as Mark was saying about the difference between two ninety nine and six ninety nine, imagine if it's two ninety nine versus ninety seven dollars. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So the conversion, the conversion is just way, way different. And you know, I know people who are they put in a dollar and they get thirty out. You know, pretty consistently. And so mm -hmm. um, it just depends on what it is you're doing. So before we go, Mark, you had a. Um... Forgive me for again being totally professional, but uh, there was a, a survey you wanted to put to our audience, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I mean, I did a survey. That was um, I, I surveyed about 150 to 200 authors and just found out what they were finding most difficult about self-publishing, and, and the answer came back. Um, it was it was just visibility. It was how do I market? How do I get people to find my books? And you know, that's the kind of I'm going to put something together that you know tries to address some of those issues from my experience. And the the one that I've done, or I'm, I'll be doing reasonably shortly, is is this is, is a video on Facebook. And if people want to get that, um, there's a site has gone up about ten minutes ago, um, which is www.selfpublishingformula.com. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, definitely. Um, so that's I'm pretty cool. Like self uh, selfpublishingformula.com. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. Look okay. Fantastic. Yeah, it looks great. You um you're you're more shaven in this photo. So. <laughs> I thought I'd you know I I I've, I've watched enough SPP to know that beards are kind of obligatory. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I actually um I actually went to this because uh, whenever I hear free videos, uh, I'm interested in checking them out. So um I know I'm gonna sign up and check it out. So everybody self publishing formula dot com and and Mark's books are at Mark J Dawson, not the fourteenth. Mark J. Dawson. <laughs> uh, anything else? Anything else before we uh, before we go, guys? Am I missing anything? No. I just say well, that is a nice pleasure to meet you all, and thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah oh, thank you very much. much. Mark, hang in. Um, hang in. We'll uh, finish the show up and and say goodbye. So, um, everybody, this has been the Self Publishing Podcast. Thanks very much for joining us. And um, if you want to, uh, as we said, get Mark's stuff at selfpublishingformula.com. It's totally free. If you want all of our best stuff without all the off-topic bullshit, uh, check out our guide. If you haven't already, write, publish, repeat at selfpublishingpodcast.com slash WPR, and we'll see you all next week.